Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! Hello, I am Paul O'Dea of the MMA Opinion and I'm joined on the line today by Clay Ringboy Teal. What's up, what's up? Clay came to prominence after a Facebook post changed his life. How are you doing, Clay? And do you want to talk me a little bit through that Facebook post, the infamous Absolutely. one? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm very blessed. Uh, I appreciate you guys for having me on, man. Uh, yeah, so it, it was actually a Facebook comment. So uh, Bare Knuckle posted a new picture and they said, uh, welcome the new fleet of ring girls, right? And they're obviously gorgeous. They're fit. They're ring girls, proper ring girls. Uh, and I just sat there and thought, why not a natural person? You know what I'm saying? Why not? No model looking, just a natural person. And then I thought, why not a fat dude with stretch marks? <laughs> I happen to have stretch marks. It all kind of lined up perfectly. So I, I, I just posted a picture of myself showing off the stretch marks and said, you know, I applied 100 times. You guys are sexist. Uh, is it because the stretch marks? What's going on? And then they replied, nah, man, we accepted you a long time ago. You, you need to check your email. And then the fans oh they they took off with it they're yeah, like no yeah. oh, this has got to happen now so um and now here we are i'm going to every event now i'm doing work for them and and not for bare knuckle themselves but uh interviewing the fighters and such so yeah um i'm blessed man very blessed for it. it it seems to genuinely have changed your life um so you, you said that this was this kind of came about kind of as a as a body conscious thing and that you you Obviously, they're not that you're against the ring girls that they had, but that you were saying they needed to kind of step up their game in that regard. And you, you yourself, you have a young daughter. Is that kind of the inspiration of what, what the, where the post came from? So it was pretty much to, to help normalize normal people being in there, you know. Uh, I know all the ring girls up there, or I know two of them at least, uh, one of the two main ones, if I'm not mistaken. They work hard, honestly. Uh, yeah. People think it's just go up there, uh, show off do the cards and it's much more than that so behind the scenes they they work really hard and all the ring girls know that i love them the first thing i did when i showed up is i apologized to them i was like i'm not trying to treat this as a joke um i mean no disrespect for july to work every single one of them loved it they said no nah, man like welcome to the team took me underneath their wings gave me a few pointers and and, and all that um um but no i i think uh i think more or less it was just uh trying to put on a few smiles you know what i mean 2020 was just shit so shit for everybody yeah. so i just said man something's got to give something's got to give man if it had to be my stomach it had to be my stomach you know? <laughs> I, I i actually that's how i came across the post just randomly on the bkfc page and they said if we get to five thousand likes we'll bring clay out to the next event and i was on it straight away I shared it on the mma opinion page and i know a lot of our guys showed it some love um I can't think what was enough, what honestly. was going through your head when they when they did post that original post saying five thousand likes and we'll fly him out yeah so i didn't even see it for at first and then they messaged me bare knuckle messaged me and they said hey go check out our page and then all of a sudden I go and look and it has 3000 likes already. Yeah. And then I go to their Instagram and it has 15,000 likes on their Instagram. So I was like, Oh shit. Like this is going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then my mentality, you know, it kind of switched from this is a game to, Oh, I can't let people down now. Yeah. So I, I, I've done ran my mouth too much, you know, uh, there's no backing out. So I immediately went to, uh, uh, we're going to take this thing. We're going to take off with this thing. We're not going to treat this thing like a little thing. I'm going to strike while the pan's hot, strike while the oil's fresh, you know, and, and uh, I'm happy I did because it opened a lot of doors. I mean, every event I go to now, I'm sponsored. So shout out Healthy One. I appreciate you, Healthy One. Very so, good. That's the beginning. Um, I do want to talk to you a little bit about that first event you went out to, BKFC 15. It was Bob O'Bannon versus Sam Shoemaker, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's correct. What, what was the experience like arriving the day before and getting to meet all the fighters and, and all the staff there at the event? Did, you, did they really make you feel welcome and a part of the team right from the off? So the first thing we did, obviously, we showed up to the hotel. Uh, one of the first fighters I met, Drew Lipton. Shout out Drew Lipton, Spider Monkey. Got great heart, man. Uh, um, looking forward to seeing him back in there again uh he was so humble and so nice shook my hand asked who i didn't he had no idea who i was at first i told him i'm the ring boy he kind of freaked out or whatever <laughs> and then we went from that to my photo shoot and mind you i've never done a photo shoot obviously i've never been in that type of life or anything um katie shook uh shout out katie she is like my number one 
person in the whole world. Sorry, babe. Uh, <laughs> she's a, uh, she hooked me and my wife up from the beginning. Didn't stop making sure we were okay the whole time. Made sure that we felt at home. And then the next step was weigh-ins, obviously. Yeah. So weigh-ins at this event, there wasn't public weigh-ins. So it was very close space, close quarters. Um, you could tell a lot of people had no idea who I was or why I was there. And then Katie started telling people, oh, hey, the ring boy's in, in here. Hey, the ring boy's here. And all of a sudden, man, everybody's attitude just switched and everybody came up giving me hugs. And, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Tyler Goodjohn, for instance. Yeah. I know there's a lot of quarrel between him and BKFC right now. But anyway, I was a fanboy of Tyler from before Bare Knuckle. Yeah. Right. I, I saw him fight in the UK and I was like, this dude's legit, legit, yeah. you know. So I've been a fanboy ever since he shows up, media swarmed him. The second he stepped foot in that place, media swarmed him. He answered two questions, pushed them out of the way, walked straight up to me and gave me a hug. Said, well, what's up, brother? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah. And I shit a golden turd. <laughs> it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. But no, man, BKFC is just, it's one big ass family. I know you hear that a lot from a lot of different companies, but if you ever get behind the scenes, it is, uh, it's top notch family right there. Very good. And I suppose coming from this and coming from the first event, you were invited to become a co-host on the Knuckle Up podcast as a result. One of the many ways, obviously, that the doors you mentioned that have opened for you. What has that been like being a part of that podcast? And uh, like, where can we find you on social media on that podcast? So, yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, Knuckle Up, one word, and then podcast on Facebook. Uh, we're also on Instagram at Knuckle Up. Um, it's a picture of old 1800 bare knuckle boxers. We just cropped our face in it, you know, had a <laughs> little bit of fun. Um, yeah, man, they, that's another reason the doors have opened for me. Right. Uh, if it wasn't for Juan and Sean, uh, those guys right there have really hooked me up and got me a lot of connections and vice versa. That's kind of why they asked me to be on the team. So that way my fan base would come over and stuff, but, uh, it was a perfect match. There was a couple of podcasts that offered me. So I was kind of tossing everything up. Nothing against the other podcasts. They're amazing too. I just saw something with this podcast and uh, we've blown up, man. Yeah. We've only been around for maybe a month and a half, two months, but everybody knows who we are now. You can't go anywhere without seeing knuckle up shirt or knuckle up this or knuckle up that. Um, those guys really are truly like my blood brothers now. So shout out Juan and Sean. I appreciate you guys. Great stuff. Um, we do obviously have to talk about Knuckle Mania. Just, just last weekend, uh, the, probably the biggest card, I suppose, in BKFC history. They certainly Absolutely. marketed it as such. And you had Paige Van Zandt making her debut in the main event. Now, first off, I suppose, what did you make of the event in itself? Uh, a phenomenal card that, that they put on. And what did you make of Paige Van Zandt in her debut? So we'll start off with Knuckle Mania in a whole. That it's just, it lived up to the hype, right? It, it it had a lot of hype coming in, and it lived up to the expectations times too. Like David Feldman said, the president of BKFC, uh, they graduated that night, and yeah. I I think that's the proper way of putting it. I mean, you have Shaquille O'Neal, who's now going to be investing money into the bare knuckle to become part owner and all this and all that, you know, there's no, uh, just like knuckle up, you can't go anywhere without seeing bare knuckle fighting championship. So it's slowly making its way mainstream. And uh, once it does, it's going to be over. So there's other bare knuckle organizations out there, um, you know, it, it, especially in the States trying to glow up and stuff, but uh, bare knuckle fighting championship did it right. They sat down, made a proper rule book, made it look as professional as possible. Uh, first event, whatever that you know, anybody's first event is going to be kind of wonky, but I really think after Knuckle Mania, people take them serious. Now there's still a lot of hate out there because they had some people who've never fought before, like Brandon Lambert, um, you know, people like that. And then Dave Morgan, a lot of people said Dave Morgan didn't need to be on there. Yeah. Dave Morgan is a veteran fighter. Uh, he, he has a lot of fights. They might not be against pros, but he does have a lot of fights. And for Brandon Lambert, Here's my app put on it. How many fans I know I myself talk shit to saying, yeah. you know, they're in this, they're in the seats going, Oh, I would have whooped that dude's ass. Oh, this dude's cardio is trash. I would have done this. I would have done that. And then they never even take a fight. Nonetheless, step into a gym. Yeah. Right now we have a fan who's running his mouth, talking shit, 
and then signs a contract willing to back drops it up, yeah. 40 pounds and then fights an absolute killer yeah i've got nothing but respect for brandon mallow lambert yeah nothing but respect anyway moving on to page when this all erupted my first pick was Paige van zandt i think she was being undermined too much um and all that that being said, Britton Hart came on the show. I'm very good friends with one of her coaches, Fusebox. They train me now, so Ring Boy's looking to get in the ring. Keep, stay <laughs> tuned. Uh, Talked to Britton a little bit. I was worried that she was going to go in there with too much emotion. Um, I was worried she was going to just try to knock her head off, but uh, she impressed me. She went in there calm, cool, and collected. Uh, she did what she wanted to do from the get-go, and that was outclass and outbox her and, and welcome her to bare knuckle. I think it was – beyond expectations i think Paige yeah. shut up a lot of haters um the woman can box i don't care what people say i mean ask any boxer if she can box and they'll tell you yeah absolutely yeah. um and power that that power was insane if you can push people's teeth back backwards you have power and all of britain's front teeth were pushed back so jesus yeah no, i think it, she's it, got it, a bright future it was a phenomenal fight, and hopefully we do get to see Paige Van Zandt back in there. But Britain Hart did look, she, she looked a veteran in there, and she looked very tough. Perhaps maybe a title is in her near future. Um, in the co-main event, of course, you had Dat Nguyen uh, pick up the bantamweight title with a win over Johnny Bedford, another phenomenal fight. How did you, how did you see that one? I know a lot of, two of the judges gave it 48-47, Um I thought it was a little bit more of a wash than that. I thought I thought that would have, uh, one judge gave a 49-46. That's how I scored it. How did you see that fight? No, man, I, I, I had it the same way, 48-47. It was just – it was close in a sense of there wasn't too much backpedaling. Yeah. I think Dad did just enough. I, I'm a firm believer you got to beat the champ to be the champ too, right? Yeah. So um, I think Dad did just that. I think he beat Johnny Bedford fair and square. Um, I think Bedford didn't see the potential that Dat really truly had. Yeah. I think Dat's now the number one guy people are worried about, as they should be, because that was my fight of the night pick from day one. I knew yeah. that that was going to be a war, and uh, maybe it should have gotten the fight of the night bonus. Those women brought it, though, too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it was uh, – it was a close one, so to speak, I guess, uh, in the sense of nobody really got knocked down, nobody got knocked out. But uh, I definitely think Dat outclassed him a hundred and a hundred thousand percent. Yeah. So I, I think uh, Johnny misunderstood bit off more than he could chew with that one. A little bit. And the other, the other kind of fight of prominence on the card, of course, is Chris Lieben in his retirement bout, uh, KOing Quentin Henry in the first round. Um, there was a little bit of, uh, very early in the fight, there was a little bit of confusion, but um, he looked damn impressive for a guy that's on the way out. Obviously, there's a lot of miles on the clock with, uh, with when it comes to Chris Lieben, and, and it, 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 it's time for him to go. It's the correct time for him to go. But what a way to go out. Um, you couldn't wax lyrical enough on Chris Lieben. Um, what did you make of the performance and of, of his kind of career, I suppose, to this point in BKFC? I think BKFC was almost tailor made for him. Uh, if he would have been younger and BKFC was around, I don't think anybody in the BKFC could have beat him personally. Yeah. Um, I thought at first it was a legit eye poke. I'm not going to lie to you. And I thought it was going to be over right there. Yeah. Um, they did tell Quentin, like, hey, that was straight up a knuckle. You either get in the fight or you stay out of the fight. And in my opinion, if it was a knuckle, you're down. It's been a 15 count, bro. You got to yeah, stay yeah. down. Yeah. I've been informed that the reason why they didn't do that is because the ref said break. Chris went up, hit him in the eye socket with his knuckle. But quit. Chris was already in motion too. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, how do you how do you judge that? So, yeah. um, but past that, whenever Quentin got up and was ready to rock and roll, I was kind of upset Quentin didn't box him. Yeah. I was kind of upset that it was just a slug war because. You're not going to win that, obviously, against Chris Lehman. But that's what Chris wanted, and that's what Quentin wanted, more importantly. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think Quentin could have went in there with a much better strategy and could have, you know, maybe went to round three, round four, possibly. Well, perhaps it wouldn't have done justice to the occasion, then, I suppose, is the big thing, yeah. Yeah, you ain't lying. You ain't. But, dude, Chris, Chris hit him clean. A lot of people say, oh, Quentin, you know, he just gave up. 
That's not true even in the slightest. I don't know how many people have taken a knuckle to the eyeball, but that mm-hmm. alone would have made 99% of people stop. Yeah. And then to get a clean uppercut straight to the middle of the face by Chris Lubin. Yeah, and there's no way you're getting up from that. So um, that was a legit hit. That was a legit fall. And he legit got knocked the hell out. So it was, it was que- It made my stomach queasy to see because that that's my guy right there, hero. Yeah, that's my guy. But uh, who 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 better than Chris to beat him? You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but I do want to get your uh your opinion on Shaquille O'Neal becoming an investor or saying or committing to investing in BKFC, and what do you think that's going to do for the sport, especially off the back of this huge event? And there's, it seems to be a, a more likely location now for people that are coming out of the UFC, coming out of Bellator, different organizations. Um, do you see BKFC blowing up in the next five years with the investment from Shaquille? Oh, yeah. I, not only the, the money-wise, the money's great, obviously, right? Um, I think the the support from Shaquille's fans and the NBA players and the, the celebrities and the, cause I mean, even in Miami, they had everyone you could think of pretty much in house showtime. Yeah. Pettis was in Mike Perry was in house. Mike Perry was jumping up and down shadow boxing the whole time. <laughs> you know, he loved it. Yeah. You know, so uh, there's just uh, the deal with it. The only thing I see that, that people really hate about bare knuckle is like the, the stitch, the cuts, more importantly, the hands, people see those fighters hands at like dad's hands afterwards. And yeah. they just look fake. They're so swollen. Um, that's really the only downfall on the, on the bare knuckle, not exploding right away. But look at UFC, man, when UFC started, that's all you heard from UFC. It was some gladiator sport that shouldn't be around. And granted they had crazy rules in the beginning, similar fighters fighting featherweights pretty much, yeah. but, uh, that BKFC is not quite there. Maybe that versus uh, uh, Beltron, we'll see. But uh, no, man, I, th- I think BKFC, the the shooting from the stars, you know, and, and they're going to be hitting them too. Yeah. Uh, they have so much support everywhere that uh, it's going to be hard. Even different countries now are, are put on notice. Everybody and their sister wants to be involved with the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship group. So I definitely think after Shaq invests money and support, that's just going to, people are just going to want to jump on that train. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, Mike Perry there. There's another man that you were saying about Chris Lieben, that he was born for the sport. Mike Perry, you couldn't argue that there's another man <laughs> like him. Um, perhaps yeah. down the road, he'd be someone that would be a huge name to sign for BKFC. I think, I don't know why he's not doing it yet, to be God honest with you, man. There's a couple of people in there like George Masvidal, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> what are you doing bro this is literally where you came from yeah come be champion in your route not only that but louis palomino uh the the champ he's yeah. beat george he called george yeah. out said come get your rematch baby yeah, yeah george you're put on notice baby you're put on notice but no <laughs> i think that'd be a good one because i mean go look at his street fights with kimbo exactly he was 16 yeah. years old beating up big ass big ass men yeah. So, I mean, his boxing is, is legit, legit. So there's a couple of guys in, in the UFC and maybe even Bellator, like uh, Austin Vanderfott. I think he, he'd be decent in the uh, bare knuckle world too. I yeah. know I'm a little biased because Paige and all, but. Uh, yeah, but it's, really cer- it's certainly a move that you could see happening. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Even talks of Conor McGregor. I don't know about that one, but uh, uh, <laughs> if he could get away from the leg kicks, maybe that would help him. Huh? Shaquille will have to open them purse strings quite wide if he's going to get Conor hey, McGregor on board. <laughs> you ain't lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> um, look, I, I do want to ask before we go, what is next for Clearing Boy Teal? When are we going to see you next at an event? I know obviously you have other stuff going on as well. Um, but what do you see in the near future for yourself? So I will officially be going to every bare knuckle fighting championship event. Unless something happens, I was supposed to be at Knuckle Mania. My daughter just started coughing and getting sick, and my other vehicle broke down, so my wife was going to have to use my old truck. Nothing nothing was working out. Yeah, We tried everything, trust me, everything to get me there. Um, I will be at the next event. I'm going to be with my boy Joe Elmore. Go check out the card if you haven't. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Uh, I may or may not be doing my ring boy thing, you know. Uh, there's no confirmation yet, but every time I get in the building, the fans go crazy, and the fans get what they want in bare knuckle. 
Yeah. That's why I showed up in the first place. So exactly. Yeah. Um, you'll definitely be seeing more stretch marks in the future. I can <laughs> promise that. I can promise that. The, the, the only thing, of course, if you're training for the fight, maybe those stretch marks will go away. You'll have to you'll have to compete at a heavier weight class or something that you intended. I can I can draw them on. <laughs> They'll never leave. <laughs> Um, look, before I let you go, we like to ask our guests on the MMA opinion to tell us something we don't know about them. So what don't we know about Clay Teal? Hmm, that's a that's a good question, actually. You can steal what that one for Knuckle know? Up if you want. What's that? <laughs> you can steal that one for Knuckle Up. Yeah, oh, you already know. I've, I've been taking notes the whole time, my man. <laughs> I'm going to be stealing. <laughs> something you don't know about Ring Boy. Uh, let's see, let's see. Well, I live in Colorado that a lot of people think that I was born and raised here. I'm a Texan, baby. I was born in Texas. We call it Tejas back where I'm from. Yeah. I was born in Tejas. Um, that's my natural roots. I'll be a Texan to the day I die. I bleed Texas. You know, that's that's just who I am. If you're from Texas, you understand me. If you're not from Texas, you have, you have no, no understanding of what I'm talking about. But uh, no, I mean, I own a small landscape company. This Ring Boy stuff, it's fun. Doesn't pay the bills, though, you know, so... Um, me and my family run, run a small landscape company. So if you're in Colorado, you need some landscape work, hit me up. Very good. Very good. Listen, it was an absolute pleasure. I've been excited to get you on for the last few weeks. And I knew with the card that we had at the weekend, it was the right time. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to get you on. Hopefully we get to see you do your stuff again soon. Absolutely. Hey, thank you guys so much for, for taking me and having me on. I appreciate you guys. No problem at all, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir.